Hi everyone, good afternoon. My name is Amanda DeMeo, and on behalf of Darien Library, I welcome you to our Aging in Place panel. We are delighted to have you join us today for an engaging panel discussion that promises to empower and to inform. I'm happy to introduce our subject matter experts that are here with us today. So get ready, I've got some good bios here. Dr. Jennifer Drummond is board certified in internal medicine and currently practices here in Darien. She earned her medical degree from St. George's University, completed her residency at Stanford Hospital, and worked as a hospitalist at Stanford Hospital for 12 years before joining Darien Signature Health. Darien Signature Health is a small concierge model medical practice that delivers patient-focused, personalized health care. Chris Jones joined at Home and Darien as the executive director in June 2022. After many years leading sale and marketing efforts, that agency has partnered with major national brands such as Nationwide, Nationwide Insurance, The Home Depot, and General Electric, among many others. Born and raised in Weston, Connecticut, Chris is a lifelong Fairfield County resident, and he earned his communications degree from Quinnipiac University. Valerie Maselis is the Area Business Director for the residents at Selick Woods. She was born and raised in Danbury, Connecticut, and is currently raising her family in the same town she grew up in. She studied business management at Quinnipiac University and received an MBA. Now, Chris Stephen Katz, after reading his bio, is someone you want in your corner. He is the president of Sterling Care, a CMS five-star certified home health agency and companion and homemaker agency based in Greenwich, Connecticut. Stephen is an adjunct assistant professor of healthcare policy and management at Columbia University Millman School of Public Health. Steve is the chair of commission of on aging for the town of Greenwich. He co-chairs Greenwich's age-friendly and dementia-friendly certification initiative with AARP, the World Health Organization, and Dementia Friendly America. Steve has an MPH from Columbia University, an LLM in taxation from NYU School of Law, MBAs in finance and accounting from Fordham University of Business, a JD from Fordham University of Law, and a BA in psychology from Brandeis University. But wait, there's more. <laughs> he is currently pursuing a doctorate in public health and healthcare policy and management from the Bloomberg School of Public Health at John Hopkins University. Steve is a New York certified public accountant and has been admitted to the bar in NY and New York and Connecticut. He is a care manager certified and advanced aging life care professional, a certified dementia practitioner, a fellow of the American College of Healthcare Executives, and a Society of Human Resource Manage Management Senior Certified Professional. Whew. <laughs> But before we begin, I would like to mention that programs at Darien Library are made possible by the annual Friends of the Library campaign. We thank you for your support to make programs like this, as well as our collections available to the community. Please give a warm welcome to our panel. They didn't teach us microphones in medical school, sorry. <laughs> um, I think what we're each going to do is share in our own way what we what services we bring to the community to help you age in place. Um, for myself as a physician, I joined a concierge model medical practice. Um, we have a membership model that patients pay a fee in order for us to keep our panel of patients small. And what that allows us to do is really have the time that we need to deliver thorough and thoughtful care to our patients. Um, so much of the healthcare landscape is a little bit like the wild, wild west, a little bit like a jungle. It's just chaotic and overwhelming or can be overwhelming. And so we look to try to simplify that for our patients to really partner with them um, and help them navigate all the complexities. So we offer longer appointment times, same and next day sick visits, house calls if that's medically necessary. Um, we offer streamlined communication. We don't have phone trees in our office or answering services. It's direct communication with the physicians directly, the people that know you and your health and your body the best. Um, we do comprehensive preventative care, blood work in our office. We coordinate the care with your specialist, with your visiting nurses, with your physical therapists. Um, and I think the take home point is really that we're able to see our patients quickly when problems are little before they become big problems. Is there anyone in this room that likes being in a hospital? I see zero hands, not surprising. They used to have to pay me to be there. I, was, I worked in the hospital for a very long time and they used to have to pay me to be there. Nobody wants to be there. And I think one of the 
things that's able to keep people out of a hospital and in your home is to have good access to primary care when you need it. So to be able to take care of little problems before they become big problems. Um, it's estimated that a third of hospitalizations are preventable in patients age 65 and over. That means that one out of three patients in the hospital right now could have potentially not needed to be in the hospital if things had gone differently. They were able to be in touch with their primary care doctor or whatever's going on. Like, and once you're in the hospital, guess where you oftentimes end up when you're 65 years or older? Like you end up in a nursing home for rehab for however many weeks before you're able to get home. So what we offer is access to good primary care to help prevent big major problems. Not everything is preventable, but also on the flip side, if you have a robust plan, you may not have to go to a nursing home when you leave the hospital. If you have a primary care doctor that can come to your house and see you in 24 or 48 hours, and you have a visiting nurse and some home health aides and other people in place to help take care of you at home, a lot of times that care and rehabilitation can happen at home also where I'm assuming if you don't wanna be in the hospital, you don't wanna be in a nursing home either, like nobody really wants to be. So that's, um, kind of what we bring to the table is to be able to offer really personalized care and to try to prevent problems and focus on prevention and keep our patients well and at home and thriving as much as they can. Great, thank you. First off, it's, I really appreciate being here and participating on this panel with uh, my co-panelists. And if I ever look to leave my job, I'm gonna send my resume uh, to Kevin, or to Stephen. Uh, it seems like you've got a lot of contacts, so. Um, America's getting older and that's a good thing. Um, people are living longer. Um, over the next three decades, adult 65 plus population is going to double, okay? And that pace is even quicker for adults 80 plus. So some of the panelists here will talk about healthcare and, and uh, housing, I'm going to talk about something a little bit different, kind of the conduit that we are for, for the seniors. I don't know if anybody has seen New York Times article uh, last month. It was titled, You Shouldn't Have to Take Care of Your Aging Parents on Your Own. And the article spoke to a number of things, including 42 million Americans are providing some type of support for somebody 50 years or older. Um, that's really where, where we sit and where we're focused with that home in Darien. Stanford Health all, also conducted a study, the 2022 Community Health Needs Assessment, and they captured a lot of different types of data, but one of the things they, one question they answered really, or uh, asked, really jumped out at me. In the past 12 months, did you ever stay home from a doctor's appointment uh, or, or miss a visit to a healthcare provider because you didn't have access to reliable transportation. So this speaks to the caregiver um, and the support and the support services that are available for this population. At home in Darien, I don't know, I, I recognize some familiar faces. We have Marianne Paternity, who's, who's part of our board of directors. We're a private organization in Darien, and we get our funding really primarily through the local community. And uh, our services, primarily transportation, many people know us, they may have seen our two vehicles on the road. Last year, 2022, we gave 3,000 uh, rides, ride segments, anywhere in Darien, New Canaan, Norwalk, and Stanford. And as you can imagine, the lion's share, probably 75% of those rides were for healthcare needs, okay? This year, we're gonna do 4,000 rides, okay? About 1,500 of those are to the Stanford Healthcare Network, and even more to, to local local physicians and and offices in in the area. We uh, we're a small organization, but uh, we are growing a number of different ways. Our outreach to the community, we're trying to do things like, such as this, being able to talk about what we do. We have a dedicated team of uh, staff members that are not in it for the money because they would have made a bad decision, but they're in it for the reward that they get in being able to support the, uh, the seniors in this community. 
We have a 15 member board about to be 17 members. And in addition to the transportation that we provide, and we do transportation for anything, not just uh, healthcare needs. We'll take people to barbershop, to the salons. I see Betty Peach in the audience. Um, we, uh, we, we will uh, we'll provide those rides for anybody um, to, to any place in those towns I mentioned. We also have some services that people n might not be aware of. We have a tremendous group of volunteers that are available to uh, visit, and which is a big thing of what we're trying to do moving forward. We can quantify the number of rides that we do in a given year, and that's great. We, you know, I mentioned the 4,000. But it's the, the additional services that we can provide. We have uh, volunteer shoppers. So there are people who, who request shopping to be done. We'll have a shopper go get a, pick up a, a grocery list and then go do the shopping. And, and, or we'll take that senior to go do shopping. We have volunteer helpers who will come into the household. And yes, they'll change a light bulb. They'll get on a ladder. Everything we, we focus on supports our mission of providing services that will help seniors in Darien continue to live independently and at home for as long as possible. Um, so there are questions that are asked of us, if not daily, then weekly, maybe something we haven't done before. The answer is yes, before we know the question. If we can help out, we're, we're gonna do that. Uh, so I would encourage anybody to go to our website and see the list of services that we have. Uh, we also have a taxi voucher program through Ever Ready Taxi. We are only open nine to four, although I'd like to extend those hours, Monday to Thursday, and then nine to one on Friday. Those hours where we're not open, we have a program where we will give, um, we, we offer taxi vouchers with Ever Ready Taxi, and we pay 50% of the cost, and the seniors pay the remaining 50%. So again, another way to provide some type of cost savings to provide those critical services. Um, and in addition to going to our website, you can give us a call. I'm in the om office almost every day. I'd love to talk to, to anybody. I love meeting people. I will go out on the rides with some of our drivers and meet some of our members because uh, I've been in this position for about a year and four months. And it's true, I probably learn something every day having come from the, you know, the corporate world. So thank you for having me here today. Thank you everyone for um, coming today. And I appreciate my panelists here on over here up front. Um, my name is Valerie and I'm from the residence at Selix Woods. We are a pioneer in modern, independent, assisted, and memory care living in the Northeast. Um, LCB is distinguished by, by, um, by its insistence on the highest collaborator uh, of hospitality and service for the residents and their families, guests, and all others who interact with our communities and associates. So some of the key pillars that make us different from other uh, assisted living and independent communities um, is our high standards for resident care, professional grade culinary services, um, thoughtful and intelligent resident engagement services. Um, we have clean, welcoming buildings in, in every aspect of the experience that we provide. LCB is further characterized by a company culture focused on family. The family that we work with our families at home and our families of residents and their loved ones who surround us. In fact, the LCB name comes from the founding partners, three, uh, their three adult children names. Um, our culture also puts a premium on hard work, accountability, and commitment. While promoting collaboration, mutual respect, working life, work life balance, and community of associates rather than employees. In all our communities, your home is more than a beautiful private apartment. The residents can take advantage of an array of services and amenities that rival fine hotels. While some offerings are dependent upon care level and location, our residents enjoy some hospitality services. So if you choose to move into one of our communities, you can get three chef prepared meals daily. You can have full calendar of social, educational, recreational, and cultural activities weekly personal housekeeping and linen service, complimentary transportation, laundry services, maintenance services, in-room dining if you would choose, personalized wellness plans and wellness activities, and the fitness classes and health um, clinics. But it's not only that, we have great amenities for those who decide to move into our communities. We have spacious 
spacious common areas, including living rooms, libraries, bistros, country kitchens, theaters, fitness rooms, salons, barbershops, and spas. We have beautifully landscaped grounds with walking paths, restaurant-style dining, um, modern emergency call and safety systems, 24-hour um, and seven days a week staff and security, state-of-the-art lifestyle technologies throughout each of our buildings. We have Amazon Echoes in uh, each apartment if you, if you choose to have one. Utilities are included, Wi-Fi is available, and there's complimentary parking. Um, one of the great things about LCB is our approach to the living lifestyle in each community. We work with Dr. Rudy Tanzi, um, the founder of the REACT Neuro, and she decide, uh, and we've come up with the SHIELD program, which kind of we take on an approach to daily to see how we can integrate um, different aspects of life into your daily routines. So the S in SHIELD stands for sleeping seven to eight hours a day. Um, the H is handling stress, and we come up with programs to reduce it throughout the day through meditation, breathing, walking. The I, interacting with others. Engagement is very important in our communities. Exercising, we want to get your heart rate up. Um, L, learning, we, we participate in these panels and programs to bring our residents out and diet, so we want our diet in low red meat and rich in fiber. So we try to in, uh, integrate all these into your daily aspects of life. But that's just a little bit about Selick Woods. We are located at One Parklands Drive here in Darien. And thank you so much for having letting me speak. Good afternoon, everyone. So if you'll indulge me for a few minutes before I talk about sterling care, you know, and I, and I usually can't help myself, I'm gonna give a little kind of academic and practical talk about successful aging and aging well, and kind of a little roadmap onto that. Um, and that will tie into all the services that everyone, all the panelists offer as well. But I think it's good to kind of get this kind of roadmap going, because it's individualized to all of, all of you. Um, when you think of aging in place, right, what does that really mean, right? And, and what it means really is that people can continue to live in their own home, no matter how, if you, how you define your home, and in your community. And this you know, we're defining it here as the Darien community, for as long as you're interested in doing so, right? And if you look at the scientific literature on this, what motivates people to want to age in place in an age at home, right? So it, 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 it makes a lot of common sense if you think about it. First, you want to be autonomous with the ability to do what you want and what matters to you, right? That's really important. People want to do what really matters most to them. Second, you want to be independent to really be able to choose freely what you want to do at a given moment in time. You want your kind of freedom and independence. Third, you have an attachment and familiarity usually to your home and to your community, right? A lot of you have been in Darien for quite a while and you have a lot of social connections, right? Which is the next reason. You have social connections to your friends and to the community. There's a sense of security by having all of that because you're used to your community and to your home. You like to perform your own activities of daily living to the best extent that you can. And so when you kind of look at what people call either successful aging or aging well, there are a whole bunch of different models. There are a lot of different models out there. One of my favorite is called the preventative, uh, corrective, and proactive model. It was developed by Kahana, Kahana, and Lee. And what it does is it incorporates proactive actions that individuals take to adopt to age-related changes and stresses to optimize their health and well-being. Um, and what you really kind of think about is that as you get older, things change, right? You have different, different changes to your health, right? I'm, you know, you see I'm wearing reading glasses. So a few years ago, I fought them like a Dickens, but now I have to kind of wear them. So I kind of changed to that. And you, and you want to kind of continue to age well and be able to do the things you used to do. And what you really have to do with that is you have to really realistically as kind of do it a self-assessment and assessment and have a plan at looking at a few items. One is what are your resources like, both financial resources, your social supports. What's really your internal dip disposition? You know, what's your self-esteem like? What are, you know, how good are you at coping? You know, are you an optimistic person or not? 
What's your ability to make proactive behavioral adaptions, right? Are you able to adapt to your environment, to changes? Are you proactive in your healthcare, right? You know, you know I think the doctor said here, are, are you proactive in seeking out medical attention? And you, you do this because you're trying to develop strategies to master different challenges because you're going to have chronic illnesses. You may have social losses. You may have environmental barriers that you have to overcome, right? You may have to kind of put in a grab bar into your shower, you know, or, or bath, right? So you can have, you know, maintain your well-being and quality of life as, as you age. And so what does this really mean if you're really going to have a proactive plan to successfully age at home and into community? What does this really look like? Well, number one, right, you want to stay healthy and take care of yourself, right? So the good doctor said you really want to see your doctor regularly or if you're sick or you notice a change in your condition, you want to have a doctor that you can really see easily and get an appointment to see easily. You want to eat healthy and exercise regularly and, and make sure you're taking your medication as prescribed. A lot of people don't do that. That's really important. You want to be cognitive, cognizant of your biological changes that are taking place as you age. You want to adopt your personal home environment to meet your physical and cognitive needs. Maybe you have to kind of put that grab bar into your house. Maybe you have to wear more comfortable shoes, right? You want to take care of your mental health. You never forget your mental health if you feel that you're struggling. You want to work smarter, not harder. You want to be proactively changed and maybe embrace technology to make life easier for yourself. You know, learn how to kind of use the, the Amazon Alexa and learn how to FaceTime with your grandkids. Um, you want to go ahead and maybe have a go bag in case of an emergency with a binder in it that has, you know, your medication, who your healthcare providers are, what your allergies are, so you can take them to the hospital. You want to stay cognitively active, right? You want to read, you want to go to courses and attend lectures here. You want to play games, you want to engage in different types of physical activity. You want to stay socially active, you want to stay active with your friends, you want to you know, go to places like At Home in Darien, right? You have a wonderful senior center, I toured it recently in Darien, it's great. You want to work, you want to volunteer, go to social events, go to hobbies. You want to have spiritual engagements, right? What, what makes you happy in life? You want to make peace maybe with negative items from your past life. Um, you want to kind of find mutually satisfying relationships with your adult children and your grandchildren. You want to get your legal affairs in order. You know, do you have advanced directives? Do you have appropriate wills, trusts, and financial planning done? Um, and most of all, you want to be resilient. So what are some of the roadblocks that I've seen? And what are some of the roadblocks that you have to, have to look at? Well, first, you know, you can't ignore warning signs. If you don't feel you're doing well, if you feel you may be struggling, if you feel there are changes, don't ignore them because the last thing you want to do is wind up in the hospital with a medical event that could have been avoided by calling your good doctor. <laughs> who's, at, who's at the end of the table over here, <laughs> right? Um, right? You, you want to kind of go ahead and, you know, be, you don't want to be, you know, not asking for help when you need it or refusing help when it's offered. I can't tell you how many times I see people say, you know what, we don't really need the help, but really you see them furniture walking and you actually know that they may be a full risk and they really kind of, you know, do need your help. Maybe not wanting to adopt your home environment, you know, not wanting to get a hearing aid when you really know you're struggling to hear and that prevents your socialization and you really should get that hearing aid, right? Um, not realistically planning, right? Not, not going ahead and looking at, well, how am I going to best preserve my assets? How am I going to best optimize my health? Um, not getting your legal affairs in order, not having those advanced directives so you can decide for yourself what your health care is going to be, who will make health care decisions for you, who will make financial decisions for you in case you're unable to do so. You don't want to be self-isolating. And if you really are mentally struggling because maybe you've had a loss, not seek out mental help. So those are really the keys to that roadmap for you. And for each one, it's very, very individual, but yet it's very, very important that you really kind of do that assessment and kind of think to yourself, what are these important factors to me and what am I doing to address each of these factors? Now, you know, when I, you know, each of the people at this table bring a different perspective, right? Concierge medicine, very important, right? Because they are really the people that you can turn to if you really have a health need and they respond immediately. At home in Darien, they provide transportation, they provide socialization, they provide a support network. Right, LCB, if you need assistant living, they are a great community to go to. They provide medical care, they provide community social support. What does Sterling Care do, right? We, you know, at Sterling Care, 
You know, we're what I call one of the last uh, locally owned and operated full service, both medical health care and non-medical home care companion agencies left in lower Fairfield County. And our goal is to offer high quality, person-centered continuum of care at home. And we do this in a few ways. Uh, first, we're a um, CMS five-star certified home health agency. And in that medical agency, we offer visiting nurses and therapists with home health aides under Medicare and selected commercial insurance if you're homebound and have a skilled need under an episode of care. We also uniquely offer outpatient physical and occupational therapy rehabilitation at home under Medicare Part B. So if you feel that your balance is off, you're kind of, kind of a little bit struggling and you need to kind of, you know, kind of get a little strengthened, we do that under Medicare Part B. We have private duty nursing, private duty PT, private duty OT. On our non-medical side, we have a homemaker companion agency and we provide homemaker companions using evidence-based age-friendly 4M model, which was developed by the Institute for Healthcare Improvement, which focus on what matters to you. Um, and what the 4Ms are, you know, it, it's what matters to you. We look at your mentation, we look at your mobility to prevent falls, and we are very careful looking at medication compliance to make sure that you're being cued for medication. We have a care manager that puts together a person-centered plan of care and supervises all of our homemaker and companions every two or four weeks, depending on your number of hours of service. And we also uniquely have a director of memory care who supervises and trains homemakers and companions for memory impaired clients. So just to conclude, aging well is about living your older adult years with purpose, passion, and grace. Each one of us has the power to design our older adult years to be vibrant, meaningful, and fulfilling. It's never too early or too late to embark on an action plan to ensure that we age and we do so with grace, success, and joy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Before we get started with the little q and A, I I just wanted to give a shout out and a, a thanks of gratitude to Kevin De Silva who put this all together for us today. Thank you, Kevin. Does anyone have any questions you want to ask the panel? I, I can repeat the question if you want. So she, you know, if, if I've misrepresented, let me know. But she said, you know, a lot of times the issue is that when you have parents, um, you know, they, they deny needing help, right? They're in, you know, they, they say, you know, we don't really need any help. We're okay. You know, everything's fine. We don't need anyone. We don't need any help, help in the home. And yet, you know, a lot of daughters, and I see this frankly every day, you know, say, oh my God, you know, what am I going to do with, with mom and dad? And, and we do really think they need help. And the parents never need help. And it's true. I mean, I'll be honest with you, owning a home care agency, I never get a call from an older adult. I get a call always from the daughters of older adults, always. Um, sometimes I get it from good sons, but I would say 90% of my business is daughters of older adults, right? <laughs> right? Um, and they will come and, 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 and they're despondent, right? Um, they're very concerned about their, about their mom, mom and dad. Um, and mom and dad are always like, we're fine. We don't even know what, what, what she's talking about. We have no idea why, why, she's, even, why she's even saying this, right? And, and, it's, and, it's, and it's difficult. And, and the question is, you know, how do you, how do you approach that subject, right? And, and here's what, I, what I've done over the years and what, I, what I've said is, you know, look, what, no one wants to give up their independence, right? Nobody. I've never met anybody, no matter what age, says, I really want to give up any independence. I really kind of want to do what I'm doing, and I never need any help at all. The issue that you really have is what you're trying to avoid is the catastrophic medical event, right? Because if I can tell you how many times I've had someone come to me where their mom has gotten out of the hospital or dad after a fall who's broken their hip and has come to me and said, um, you know, Steve, how, you know, how much care do I need for my mom and dad? And, and I'll ask the question, this is a question I always ask, I said, so is this the first time that your mom and dad has fallen? Now, I know this answer, because this happens all the time, and they will sheepishly tell me, um, well, it's between four to about eight times that I've known in the past year, that I've known in the past year. So statistically, that's probably more likely that their mom and dad has fallen. And by the way, when you define fallen, that means that you're 
motion is going down, not necessarily that you've hit the floor, right? That they usually did somewhere between about 15 to 20 times in the past year. Right? So if you're starting on there, it's really just, it's like Russian roulette. It's only a matter of when you're going to fall and when you might break something that winds you up into the hospital. And as you, the doctor said, going into the hospital is not really where you want to be because going into the hospital is not just that you may break your hip. It causes potentially a lot of other medical issues. Now, what you're trying to avoid is those medical, other medical issues because then you really can wind up with not having as much choices as you want to have and not being able to resume the life you had before. And that event could have been prevented with a little bit of care, a little bit of change into your home environment. And that's sometimes one of the things that you have to explain is that sometimes if you're proactive in this, you actually can continue to have a very high quality of life and avoid that catastrophic medical event. I mean, you know, and avoid really things that could really, you know, set you back and, and you know, cut back your lifespan. Sadly, insurance doesn't cover the concierge fee for the, um, for the concierge practice. So you keep your health insurance, we bill your health insurance for your medical visits, but the, the fee, um, is something that patients, it's a luxury, right? Like it is a luxury, there's no question about that. Um, and you know, some younger people who are working, if they have an HSA or an FSA plan, sometimes you can dip into that money to pay the concierge fee. I'm not sure if the long-term care insurance would cover or not. I guess you could check with your policy, but I don't know that that does. Here's, here's something that maybe, if, if, I don't know, how many of you are, are, have a financial background? Okay, so if you have a financial background, I'll, I'll put it into a, into a financial background term. Um, you know, what you're trying to do when you do kind of preventive medicine, wellness, when you go to a concierge doctor, is you're increasing, in, in the um, healthcare economics world, you're increasing the value of your health stock, right? So. As you, anything you do, right, if you work out every day, if you eat good food, so think about it, you go, if you're going now to Whole Foods, if you're gonna go do a workout, you increase your value of your health stock. If you see a concierge stock and you keep up with your flu shots, you're increasing the value of your health stock. As you age and as you get older, especially after age 65, your health stock naturally declines just by you know, nature, it's naturally declining. And so what you're trying to do more and more is do more things that increase the value of your health stock. One of those things, if you're thinking about it, is like a concierge doctor, right? That helps increase the value of health stock because you're not waiting, you're being proactive about your care, you're doing preventative care. And so you kind of, sometimes I tell people you can look at it as an investment. I mean, that, you know, that's a, a way of looking at it. I want to uh, piggyback on a couple of things Stephen said relative to that first question. Um, and at least from where we sit, and, and we, we really support those adult caregivers that uh, Stephen spoke of. And many of those are, are out of town, out of state. So we wind up getting calls, and there are concerns. So how do we, how do we work with a senior to get them to trial and go into the senior center? And I've had conversations where somebody who's, 86, 87, that's for older people, that's not for me. You know, so how do we get them to do that? Well, we develop relationships with, with the community and, and, our, and our residents and our members, and we get them to try it. And that might be getting them to get in our car, we'll take you there, we'll bring you there, we'll introduce, introduce you to Beth Paris. Darianne Han, Dairy has an unbelievable senior center. And, and everything I hear from every other community, by far and away, one of the top ones. So how do you get somebody to walk in those doors? Because I think once they walk in those doors. So that's where we sit. A lot of that is to, as I said before, be that conduit to, to work with the seniors, not just to give them ride place, places, but to be able to see where, where are the gaps in, in terms of their, their isolation? How do we get them? We're looking to potentially get another vehicle and do evening rides. How many people would like to get in a car at six o'clock at night, whether you drive during the day or not, and go to a museum, you know, or go to a restaurant? What if we got a, an opportunity with a local restaurant with all the growth in Darien? So there are different ways to do that. And one of the things that I'm, I, I, you know, I spoke about the percent of people who do caregiving. A lot of those 
children are out of, out of town. So we sit between the Mather Center, the Senior Center, and the town's human services. And I think we're a uh, trusted partner with those two organizations. And just give you a quick story. Uh, again, we, we really compliment the, the people on this stage. Uh, but we had a driver who rode with one of our members and that member just wasn't acting herself during our ride. Well, our driver came, came back to the office, wound up going back to that resident's uh, um, house after hours and she had had a, a physical health episode and got the, got the uh, ambulance there and potentially saved her life. So those types of organizations that really can complement some, you know, we're not the big story, but, but again, I think we can help in terms of, of getting people, getting seniors to maybe trial some of the things that are out there that they may not otherwise be, be uh, aware of. We, we service Lower Fairfield County, so basically from Westport downward. You know, I, and, and I'll, I'll turn it over to anyone else, but I, I think it, it depends what stage of, of aging you're in, right? You know, it, it used to be, right, um, when, when Medicare and Medicaid first in, came into being, right, people were retiring at age 65, and then they were living to about age 72 and passing away fairly quickly of a heart attack or cancer, right? Now there's a longevity bonus, right? People, you know, can live well into their 90s, right? Even 100, right? Um, and so, you know, now if you look at the stratification of aging, we have what we call the kind of, you know, you know, baby older adults, the middle stage older adults, and the older older adults, right? So it's stratified, right? It's not even like there's one, <laughs> there's one level of older adults anymore, um, you know? So, and so depending on where you are, so if you look at a senior center, right? A senior center usually will get anywhere people in from about 65, you know, up. And it depends on your programming. I mean, I, you know, I, Darien, by the way, has a wonderful senior center. We toured, I, I run the Greenwich Senior Center. That's part of what we do at the Commission on Aging on Greenwich. And we toured Darien and we were like, wow, Darien's like amazing. Um, so she's actually right. Um, you know, and, right? and, and, and Darien has, has, you know, great activities for all of those ages. And for them, you're getting active seniors. You're, they're fairly independent, right? You really want to kind of, so for socialization, you know, you had a, I think you had a woodworking shop, if I recall, in the senior center, right? I mean, so, you know, you have a lot of different things going on. And for them, it's really just the person idea of the, you know, I don't want to go into a senior center. In Greenwich, where we rebranded our senior center. We don't call it a senior center anymore. We call it the Wallace Center for Vibrant Living, Purposeful Aging. <laughs> right? Um, right? So, right? So we don't even call it a senior center anymore. Um, you know, because, you know, people want to just go to kind of a, a you know, a center um, and have different activities to go. As you get older and you need more care, right, and, and you may say, wow, you know, I, I need more care, maybe I need to go into assisted living, what you're trying to really kind of get your mind around is how can I kind of continue to maintain a high quality of life and socialization with some help? And that idea of I need some help is a tough thing for people to get their psychological mind around. People are happy, when you retire, people kind of are like, the joke in the industry is people are happy to plan for, I'm going to go travel and play golf, and they're very happy to plan for their estate. But no one really wants to plan for the time when they may need some additional help or care, and that's the hardest part for people to get their, their mind around. So you really have to kind of work with people on, you can have a really high quality of life, you can extend your high quality of life, but you just may need some assistance to do so. That was Betty Peach, who I mentioned before, and uh, I gave her money to say that. Um, <laughs> well, I think that's an important thing in terms of you, my philosophy at, at our organization is that our favorite word should be yes, right? We're not there to give an opinion to the senior. We're there to say, yes, the senior has a need. How do we make that happen? So everything we do, everything I, I work on every day is to be able to provide that opportunity to say yes. Uh, the reality is we have two part-time drivers. Some of the days we only have one driver on, on the road. We try to accommodate everybody. We have volunteer drivers who complement our paid drivers. And uh, we, we do prioritize medical appointments. But that's the challenge. And, and I think while, you know, 
what we're talking about, how do we do more? How, how do we be able to say yes more? And, and transportation. I don't think I gave the stat. I, th I mentioned it, but that study by Stanford Health, I don't know if I said, gave the number, but adults 65 and older, 38% of, of those individuals missed a, a health appointment because they didn't have transportation. So, it, it, real quickly on that, uh, during, uh, during COVID, I guess we're still in COVID, but during COVID, we had a mandate that all of our riders had to have been vaccinated and had to prove that. Um, that changed a little bit, and, and I, I think um, that uh, that would be difficult to continue with, but uh, the, the employees and our drivers, we make sure that they're all vaccinated as, as well as the, uh, the volunteer drivers that we have. Okay? And it's also the... the um, the riders have the opportunity to request our drivers to wear masks also. So that's something that's possible. Oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to say one quick thing. Also, just to reiterate Mrs. Peach's point that if you have an emergency or a problem at night and you don't know who to call, having a concierge physician, we're literally like one phone call away. There's no phone tree. There's no answering service. There's no wait for Dr. Drummond to call me back. You just make this thing ring. I pick it up and we talk about the problem. And I know our patients because I see them, I know their history, I know their medications, I have access to their charts and their records. And that's really the best person to be making decisions about your health. As a physician, when I cover other practices and other people, it, you tend to be a little bit more erring on the side of caution or sending someone to the ER when if you really know someone and know them well, you might be able to prevent that and, and just know what the issue is because you know that person intimately and deeply. So in this area, it's an average of anywhere from 2,500 to 4,000 a year is usually what you'll see. I mean, I think, yeah, I think a primary care doctor is an excellent place to start where we can, where, where we can, the question is, if I, if I think I need help, who do I ask? Who do I start with? And your primary care doctor is where you start. I can refer you to Selix Woods if we think that that's a place that you need to get out of your house that is not safe at home. I can bring in members of Sterling Care to assess your home for your safety, but we can do an evaluation in the office. What are the problems? What are the issues? And hopefully you would develop a relationship with your physician that you might feel more comfortable saying, this isn't working out, or I'm nervous, or I've been falling a lot more. Like I hope that my patients feel comfortable telling me those things so that we can work on them and try to mitigate problems. And I think your primary care doctor is a great place to start personally. And then we have access to all of the different branches and fields and can make recommendations of what, where to start. It might just be a simple physical therapy to get you strong so you're not falling. Um, or, or I know that Sterling Care offers, you know, home safety assessments to come into your house to see what's going on and that kind of thing as well. Yeah. There's nothing better for us when we get when we have the primary care doctor is the one who gives us the call, because if you think about it, right, um, a lot of times when the family gives us a call, right, they say, no problem, um, mom is not a forest. She perfectly sleeps through the night. It's not an issue. And then when we get in there, what we really find is actually. Mom's a real bad fall risk. She doesn't sleep through the night at all, and she may have kind of, you know, mid-stage dementia, right? So what we much rather have is the doctor, right, give us the referral, because then we know you've seen the doctor. The doctor knows you well. She can give us a very accurate description of what needs to be done, what type of care it needs to be. Um, and for us, that's the best way that we can provide the care, right? You know, if you think about it from our home care agency's perspective, we can, you know, for us to provide care, we have to know truly what's the situation, right? What, what is the real situation? And the one who knows that best, if, you know, as you, you said, is, is your primary care doctor if you have good communication back and forth. So I totally agree with you on that. So I might disagree. <laughs> um, only in the sense that that's a really great question because and, and why I think we're up here representing different aspects of this of this population and the process so somebody calls and says my parents I live out of out of town my parents um, my, my mother is is failing a little bit 
my, my father is taking the laundry downstairs to, to do the laundry every day, and there are no railings on the stairs. So there are all sorts of calls that, that are made, not just health related, but um, you know, who's, who's, uh, who's the best plumber to call in town? Okay, so I think th there is no singular answer, but I, I think the important thing is to understand the resources that are available. And I think all of us represent those resources because, and selfishly I say that because we get calls. Can you remove an air conditioner for us? Can you uh, look at my parents' house because my, my father won't listen to me when I tell him he shouldn't be carrying baskets of clothes down, down these steep stairs. So there are all sorts of answers. So I, I, I don't disagree in actuality. But, but again, I, I think you know, it's important to understand the full scope of services that are, that are available for the senior community. It's a very good question. Um, our challenge, and I've asked this question when I, when I came on board, because we get calls from residents of Stanford and Norwalk, can, can you help? I had a call from a woman who had lived in Darien for 50 years and has moved out to a neighboring town. Um, our challenge in, in full transparency is right now, we are primarily supported by the Darien community, uh, private donorships which sustain us. So our concern is that if we start expanding our services to other towns, well, that's going to impact the people who primarily support us. So that's a challenge. And I'd love to have more dialogue on that. And, and our board members are very open to those types of discussions. But you know, again, the reality is we're, we're funded by, by Darien residents. And uh, that's just something we need to continue to, to really evaluate. I don't know. No, it's a, it's a great question. And, and again, early on, I asked that. And what I will do is I'll add that to the agenda where the next board meeting and, and talk about that, okay? So, so I, yeah, and I'd like to, to circle back to you on that and, and keep you updated because I'll have that conversation and any other feedback or recommendations, please let me know. Thank you so much everyone for being here today. Let's give another warm um, applause for our panelists. <laughs>